A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There has been a lot of bad news over these past weeks and months. I think we can all agree on that. And each day over the past weeks, many of us have tuned in to hear the numbers. And our hearts have been heavy as we've heard about the many people who have died or who have become sick. In fact, for many of us, people we know have become sick or have died. And also as we begin to go out and about a bit in these days, we see shops for rent that perhaps three months ago were still in business. We see bars and restaurants that haven't opened. We peer inside and we see the chairs stacked up. And we wonder, was this just temporary or will it maybe never open again? Perhaps we speak to shopkeepers in our own neighbourhoods who share their worry and anxiety with us about whether they're going to actually make it. And we hear, too, of the anger of many people who have made great sacrifices in order to follow the guidelines, just to feel that their efforts have been undone by people who feel that rules are for other people, or they feel let down by the government programs and their inability to get the help that they think they need. And as we breathe, perhaps, a little bit of a sigh of relief here in Italy, we know, too, that Cases are on the rise in other countries where health services are working to capacity or indeed being overwhelmed. And so as we grapple in our own hearts and minds with the situation around us and within our own lives, it is, I think, worth asking ourselves, what is the good news that God has for us today? What we learn at this time of Pentecost this celebration of the gift of God's Holy Spirit, is that not only are we assured of God's presence with us, in us and around us, but we are assured that we matter, that our own lives are not just a statistic or a number, even when it somehow feels like we are expendable. In our reading from the letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul celebrates the diversity of the Spirit's action in our lives. He reminds us that we live out our Christian calling in many different ways. And God's measure of our lives is most certainly not how much money we make or how our efforts have contributed to the GDP. Some of us are elderly. Some of us are young. We are men or women, gay or straight, of various cultures and ethnic heritage. We're introverts or extroverts, employed or unemployed. And yet we have all been given gifts by the Holy Spirit. In a world that measures just about everything according to monetary growth, value, productivity, we're once again reminded that we cannot buy or earn God's love for us. 
God loves us and showers his gifts upon us because he's created us and redeemed us. We don't buy or earn or deserve God's love or his gifts. It is just pure grace. And the value of our lives is not measured by economic output, but rather against criteria of love, joy, peace, justice, mercy, and generosity. The Corinthians to whom Paul was writing had rather a tendency to compete with one another. They each wanted to be the best or the brightest or the most admired for their spirituality. But Paul is having none of it. He says to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. In this period of so-called lockdown, We've all been called upon to think in terms of a greater good, of not just doing things for my own health and well-being, but for the health of the soul. And that has, for the most part, required us not to do things and not to spend time with people. But we are now entering into a new phase. And just as the disciples who received the Holy Spirit were being sent out, so we too are entering into a phase of being out. It is necessary for us to rebuild community, to rebuild our church life, and to once again become more active in the world. In the days ahead, perhaps not only will we need the fire of God's Holy Spirit in us to act boldly as we rebuild community, but we will also need the cooling refreshment of God's Spirit to enable us to be slow enough so that we can be sensitive to the people around us and also take the necessary time to understand what God is actually calling us to be and to do. If we simply start rushing around, trying somehow to recover what we had before, we may fail to see what God has given us in this time of changed routines, and we may fail to understand God's call to do things differently in ways which bring greater health not only to us, but to our communities. It is well worth the time for us as individuals and as a church community to think carefully about what we are doing and why. Perhaps at the end of the day, instead of asking ourselves how many items we've ticked off our to-do list, we might stop and ask ourselves, in what way have we contributed to the amount of love, mercy, justice and joy in the world? As we begin to go out into the world again, we do well to remember that God loves us, values us, and has a purpose for us. This is good news for all of us, and it is good news for the world. The future is there before us. God has a purpose for our lives. And we all have gifts which enable us to make visible God's justice, God's mercy, his joy, and his peace. And so guided strengthened, comfort, and challenged by God's Holy Spirit. Let us go forth. Let us go forth thoughtfully, carefully, but also boldly and with quiet confidence that we as individuals and as his church have a part to play in God's vision for his world. Amen. So may I wish you a very beautiful day a day with joy, with peace, and with the opportunity to share that joy and that peace with others.